Hey, what is going on YouTube? This is going to be a little bit of a different type of video for me. Uh, this is going to be a review of a 3D printer, which I have behind me. This is the Anycubic Cobra X 3D printer. It is a Betslinger 3D printer. And as you can see by the looks of it, this is basically a direct competitor to the Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer and all the other Betslinger type 3D printers that have come on the market as of late. Uh, Anycubic did reach out to me a couple weeks ago to see if I was interested in reviewing this printer. It was sent to me for free, free of charge, and in exchange for my honest uh, review and feedback of this printer. So in this video, I'm just gonna go over my initial thoughts on this printer. I've been printing with it for about two weeks, uh, whether or not you should get this printer, uh, the good, the bad. Uh, so let's just get right into it. So I've been printing with this printer for about two weeks now, on and off. Um, I was having some issues in the beginning, which I'll get into later in this video. Um, but the unboxing is pretty straightforward. Uh, it comes very well packaged, unboxing setup, printer probably took about 10 minutes to set up all, all together with taking all the parts and screwing in the hardware. Very similar to the way the Bamboo Lab A130 printer is assembled, so there's nothing really crazy with that. But once I got it unboxed, set up, ran the calibrations, again, all that stuff is pretty straightforward. I got right into printing with this printer. And that is where I encountered my first issue. The issue being that the slicer software that I had received from Anycubic was the incorrect version. It did not have the Anycubic Cobra X listed as a printer on the slicing software. So therefore I couldn't remote start prints. I couldn't slice prints for this printer. I wasn't able to utilize the slicing software in the way that it was intended to be used. So I did reach out to Anycubic uh, and within one day they sent me the correct version of the slicer that had this printer. And then I was off to printing. And in the meantime, what I was doing was I was printing uh, some of the preloaded files that was on the printer. I just loaded some colors in and just printed out whatever files were on the printer itself. So I did that for the first day or so. And then when I got the correct software, I was able to download some models, slice it in Anycubic's slicing software. Familiar with Orca Slicer, or Prusa Slicer, or Bamboo Studio. Pretty much the same thing. It's kind of a clone of all of those slicing softwares into one application. So nothing's going to be unfamiliar to you there. Now, Anycubic does advertise that this printer prints faster and produces less waste than the competitors on the market there. So we really put this to the test. I've been printing mainly multicolor things with this 3D printer. And you'll see one of the most unique advantages of this printer that I really like is number one, the spools are top mounted onto the frame of the 3D printer. That, and you don't need an AMS style unit to be able to print with four colors. And that's because they have this newer technology called the ACE Gen 2. So all the multicolor capabilities are built into the uh, extruder um, hot end assembly right here. You don't need any other piece of equipment to be able to do multicolor printing. So right out of the box, this thing can print up to four colors, which I think is really unique and is really cool. It's something really cool about this printer. And it's really nice that they give you the, like the spools are mounted on the frame itself. You don't need to 3D print a, you know, this is the Bamboo Lab A1 printers. You don't need to print out the brackets, the plastic brackets and mount the AMS unit on the top. This comes standard with the Cobra X. So it does save you space. You can fit three, four of these printers across without any issue. And one of the first prints we started off with was this uh, Light Fury print here. Um, the entire body was printed in solid color and then the head was printed in multicolor. Again, the slicing software that Anycubic uses is very straightforward, very similar to Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer. So there's nothing new there. I used Anycubic's generic PLA profile and I think it came out pretty well. And then we did some really crazy prints. If you follow my channel, you know that we sold a lot of these gingerbread dragons over the Christmas season. And what's interesting with this printer is this printer makes this in seven hours less than the Bamboo Lab A1 printer. It saves seven hours off a one and a half day print, which is a pretty significant amount of time. And the quality on this, I think, is very comparable to the Bamboo Lab A1 printer. I don't think there's anything bad I can say about this print right here. Now it's pretty interesting how this printer reads the filament that's coming in. So basically on the top there, you basically feed in the filament. So for instance, I have the pink filament retracted right now and you have to kind of just feed it through until it hits the, uh, the extruder. And then it'll give this nice little chime. I don't know if you heard that or not, but maybe this might be easier. Um, once it gets to the location that it needs to go, it'll, it'll chime. And so let me take this back out. Oh, there we go. and push it back in so it's out right now and then i'm going to push this red in and it'll do this little chime 
and that is when you go on to the touchscreen and then you can change the color on whichever slot. So for instance, red was on slot four, and you can now change it to whatever color you want. And they have these little uh, color swatches here that you can just select the color. All right, this is the Heart Cookie Dragon. This one is also from Cinderwing, um, printed with four colors. This took about one day and five hours, I believe, on the slicer. Uh, this is the dragon. It came out beautifully, no issues. Uh, this is the amount of waste that it produced. Uh, I haven't been able to test the amount of waste that comes out of this printer versus the Bamboo Lab A1 printer. Uh, that's gonna be probably for something in a future video, but this is the, the amount of waste that came from this print. Now in this video, I'm not really gonna go into the really technical aspects of this 3D printer. I think you can go on their website. There's probably a lot of other content creators that are out there that are gonna be going over the specs of this printer, you know, line by line. Now the reason this printer stood out to me, uh, at one point we had over 90 Bamboo Lab A1 printers and I got the A1 printers for basically a few reasons. Number one was the price and number two was the reliability of multicolor 3D printing. Now this printer at the time of recording this video, if you bought this as an early bird special on their website, it's about $279. I think right now the Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer is around $400. So this is a significant price reduction uh, in terms of basically the same style printer. I think it does have a ton of improvements over the A1. Number one being that the spools are top mounted up there. And number two is that you don't need an AMS style unit that either sits next to it or is a separate standalone unit to be able to print multicolor. So this printer right out of the box can do multicolor 3D printing and single color 3D printing and no extra charge. I think that is really its competitive advantage. Now I only have about a hundred or so hours with this 3D printer behind me. So I don't, I can't really speak for the reliability of the printer yet. I may do a you know, six month update on this printer. But one thing that really, really stood out to me is I used my own plastic that I make here at the print farm on this printer uh, for prints that took over one day, some prints took a day and a half, all using filament that I make here in my print farm. The filament that we make here, uh, it's very inconsistent in terms of diameter. We have tolerances probably plus or minus uh, 0.05 millimeters, and so it's not you know an industrial type filament. This printer has been printing with the printer with the filament that we make uh, perfectly fine. I have had no clogging with this printer at all since I started using it. The only issue that I've had in the two weeks that I've been using it is the spool up here. Uh, tangled on itself. Uh, sometimes the spool up here will unwind itself and get tangled onto the hold, uh, the holder right there. And that is really my own fault. It's user error because uh, the spool that I was using, this is a red that we made in house. The spool was just too fat. And so when it retracted, it kind of just went over the spool, the spool holder, uh, the spool itself, and it just got tangled there. And that was really the only issue that I've had. Oh, I also did have a piece of filament that broke off inside of the uh, PTFE tubing in here. And this is a really simple fix. You just basically unscrew these two screws here. There's one here and there's one behind it. You pop this unit off and then there's a piece of broken filament that was stuck inside of there that you just take out, put it back on and everything was fine. So those were really the only two issues that I was having. And really that's one for the spool holder is a user error. It's not really the printer's fault. Uh, this other part was probably just, you know, a little bit of brittle filament that broke off in there. Um, and that happens all the time with, you know, these Bowden tubes. Also, the design of the purge wiper is a little bit more uh, robust than on the Bamboo Lab printer. It's a little bit metal. It's a little bit beefier and chunkier. And it does, I haven't had any issues where like, you know, fill, sometimes on the A1 printers, you have some scraps falling under the bill plate here and, uh, and onto the railings. Um, but. From my testing with this printer, this has been working very well. Again, too early to tell, but so far so good. And now I'm over here on my Bamboo Lab A1 printer. A lot of our printers start developing this like brownish rust on the purge wiper. Um, I don't know if you can see it out there, but this happens uh, on almost every one of our purge wipers. And then we just have to replace this. So I don't know if that's by because of this design or why that's happening but it's happening on almost all of our a1 printers let me know in the comments if this is happening to you if there's any way to prevent this 
Now, the only real downside that I have to say about this printer is that you have to manually feed the filament uh, for each slot all the way through the PCIe tubing here manually. So it's not like an automatic um, uh, gear or something that allows you to, that feeds it in like the A1 printers. Um, this is a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing is that there's not a lot of mechanical components that can break, right? From here all the way down to the extruder, there's no mechanical components that can break over time. Um, you're just manually having to feed the filament all the way down. So I think that is a plus. I have not had the opportunity to experience any clogs, thankfully. Um, but this does have a quick nozzle ejection system. Uh, which is right there. I can't really do it right now, but... All right, well, this is the look at the hot end right there. As a little cutter that will cut the filament to retract it. All right, we're going to wrap up the video, but before we do so, I just want to show off uh, some other prints that we did with the printer. Uh, this is a, a little Snoopy tray. This was printed. Uh, it took about three and a half hours to get this thing printed on there pretty quick. Um, so this is a, you know, just a tray, a dish. You can put stuff on it whatever you want to do with that. So that was that one. And then the other one was this uh, knitted Mew. Um, this I did a whole plate full, I think four or five of them on a plate. Uh, this is the final result. I think it came out pretty well. Uh, it did require supports. I used uh, the tree support structures on here, uh, 0.275 top Z distance. And I think this came out pretty well as well. So, who is this printer for? Who is it targeting? I think this is a direct competitor to the Bamboo Lab A130 printer. If you print in multicolor and you want to do multicolor printing, you want to do more of it, this printer does it in surprisingly quicker than the Bamboo Lab A1 printers. Currently, if you get it on the early bird special, you're saving $120 off of the MSRP price of $400. Yeah, I think if you do multicolor printing, um, I think this printer definitely is worth giving it a shot, especially at this early bird pricing. I don't think this pricing is gonna last long. I think the early bird pricing ends in about seven days. So you might wanna check out the website, see if this printer is for you. Um, also, what's really cool is uh, on this uh, little screen right here, it tells you what extruder, uh, sorry, what spool of filament it's on. So right now it's on one, which is the yellow. So it's printing on the yellow. And then if it does two, it goes to two, three, four. And I like this because it'll tell you exactly uh, what spool, let's say you run out of filament, it'll, it'll stop. It'll say like number one is out of, number one is out of yellow and you can just go to slot one and feed in the yellow. Or if you have like, you know, four of the same color spools, you don't know which one is out of filament. It'll tell you exactly which one is out right there. All right. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. I will see you in the next one. Bye.